Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Caleb and this is Drowning in Yarn. Today I wanted to talk to you about knitting socks, specifically why I keep making mistakes on my knit socks. I wanted to talk to you about this because I think that I've been putting my stress into my knitting and it should be a place of relaxation, which is really hard when you're constantly worrying about some mistake you made or some poor choice that you made. So stick around if you wanna see what mistakes I've been making, what I plan to do to fix them, and what you might be able to learn from my mistakes and poor choices. Really quick, before we jump into the video, I just wanted to remind you if while you're watching this video, you're getting some value out of it, to definitely hit that like button below. It really helps me out, as does subscribing if you wanna see what videos I have coming up in the future. And if you wanna be notified when those videos come out, hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've knit three socks recently. Well, I've knit two pairs of socks recently, and I'm working on a third pair. And the last two that I finished, have issues. The issues are entirely down to mistakes that I've made or poor choices that I made. So I just wanted to show you those two pairs of socks and let you know what I did wrong and why I think I made the mistakes that I did. So the first of the two pairs of socks that have some problems due to my own issues are the Artist Garden socks by Tiff Nealon. Tiff Nealon designed these socks to be knit using scraps of yarn if you have them and you're holding fingering weight double. They make these gorgeous, like really thick house socks, or you could even wear these in a boot. They're awesome, and the pattern was really easy to follow and really well written. However, these lack some stretch for me because I made a really poor choice when I made them. So they're very tight whenever I put them on. Once I get them on my feet, they're pretty comfortable, but just getting them on my feet is a little bit of a struggle. Now, the problem that I made was I did not trust Tiff Nealon's suggestion of the needle to use for these socks, nor did I do a gauge swatch. I almost never do a gauge swatch for socks because in my head, I have that sizing figured out. Apparently, that assumption that I've made or that belief that I continue to have was wrong because these socks are hard to put on and did not need to be. If I had just listened to Tiff Nealon's suggested needle size, or did a gauge swatch, I wouldn't have this issue. I still love these socks, they're still comfortable, but they're not as good as they could be. The next pair of socks that I have an issue with are my You Better Work socks by Maxim Sear. I hope I'm saying his last name right. You'll know him from Instagram as Max the Knitter. These socks are awesome. You'll recognize these if you've been watching me since the beginning or if you've gone back and watched my first two videos because these are the socks that I was knitting on in my first video. I just finished them, and the reason that I just finished them is partly because I treat my socks like a background project, and partly because I made a really stupid decision. So these socks have issues with the fit because I chose the wrong size for me. I knit the 68 stitch sock using a size one needle, which I've decided to try to stick with a size one needle for my socks, even though they go a little bit faster with the US size one and a half needle, because I have big feet, I have size 12 feet, so socks just take forever, even though I love knitting them, they just take a long time. But a size one needle gives a better, more durable fabric, or that's my kind of belief, and I think that's a good belief, and it's a good practice just to go with a size one or a smaller needle. However, if I knit with a size one and a half, I can get away with 68 stitches because the fabric will be looser. If I knit with a size one, come to find out, I need to do a 72 stitch sock. That's not what I did on these socks. So they are tight. The stitches at the top of my foot, like on the opposite side of my heel, I don't know what that part of my foot's called, but they're tight there and they didn't need to be. So the second issue that I had with fit on these is down to the bind off, which is sort of problematic because I did choose a stitch count that is too low for the needle that I was using. But it's also problematic because I did not follow Max the Knitter's instructions in binding off the socks. I ended up following it on one of them, but it was a very long route to get there because I decided on the first sock, oh, I'm just gonna go up two needle sizes and bind off because that worked for me before. 
or so I remember it working for me before, but it's been a little while since I knit Toro socks, so I thought that would be fine. It wasn't. So then I just said, I'm gonna worry about this with the second sock. I went on to the second sock and I looked up stretchy bind offs, found one that you do with a crochet hook and bound off using a crochet hook. Now that was stretchy enough, but the problem for me was it had a lot of flair. And I was thinking, oh, I spent a lot of money on this yarn. You know, I flew it in from Paris, so why not get this sock right? And so I undid that bind off on that second sock. Then I bound it off again using a different technique, which I can't even remember which one now. Oh, I knit two through the back loop, that layer. So I took that out and then I bound it off using a different bind off. And I'm thinking this whole time, I can't have flare. Having flare is imperfect. I want this to be perfect. I need to find the perfect bind off. So I took that third bind off out. Then I finally went back and did what Max said in the pattern, which was to do Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off, which I have done before. I know how to do. And why I didn't just do it is beyond me at this point because I ended up there in the end. Now, as you can see, there's still a little bit of flare, but I have one sock that's bound off using, I believe the crochet hook, and I have another sock that's bound off using Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off. Am I gonna go back and rebind off that first one? Absolutely not at this point, because this process took something that should be fun and should be relaxing, and through nobody's fault but my own, and through my own like weird thought process, became this really stressful thing. And I still have two socks with slight flare at the top. And the thing that frustrates me about this the most, about the choices I made, were that when you put them on, there is no flare because they're stretched out. And nobody is examining my socks as they sit in my sock drawer. So now that we talked through those two socks and what I find that I made mistakes on there, I figured I'll show you the sock that I'm working on now and talk through how I'm trying to make sure I don't make the same mistakes and what I'm gonna do with my process to try to like get it down right and not make mistakes in the future. So this is my current sock project. I'm a few inches past where I'm gonna put the heel. I am doing um, a peasant heel, which I realize I need to stop saying afterthought heel because that's not right. An afterthought heel is where you don't put any waist yarn and you pick up stitches and cut those. And what I always do is a peasant heel because I do place the waist yarn to help me place the heel later. So this sock is from the Totally Rad Socks pattern by Summer Lee Design Company. And I absolutely love this pattern. Summer has put so much information in there that I think that this pattern would be awesome for a first time sock knitter because she really walks you through kind of why things are done and how things are done. And she has links to videos to help you with new techniques. She also offers two different cuff options, two different length options, two different options for stripes. She offers two different heel options. There's just a lot you can do. And I really like this pattern because I think it would really highlight yarns that maybe don't have kind of a hand-eyed look to them or solid colors or just really any yarn look great with this pattern. And I really feel like it would elevate it and add some interest to some otherwise maybe not exciting yarns. So now that I've discussed this sock that I'm working on, I figured I would tell y'all what I'm trying to do differently with this sock in order to kind of get myself back to that place where I'm making socks that I like and I'm making socks that are correct or substantially correct. The first thing that I'm doing is reminding myself to trust the designer. These people are experts at what they do and they spend all this time writing their patterns, getting them tested, putting them out. And I don't know why sometimes I think, you know, oh, I know better or, oh, I'm gonna figure out something better. At the end of the day, I need to put my trust in the designer's hands. I need to trust that the pattern is well-written, that the pattern is gonna produce the product that I want. And that's something that I'm doing with this sock is just reminding myself to slow down, take the pattern one line at a time, and to do it as written. For instance, with my artist garden sock, that would have been to my benefit because I would have used the correct needle size instead of knitting with the smaller needle size that I had used in previous DK weight socks, but wasn't right for this sock. And for my You Better Work socks, it would have saved me like binding off and picking out the bind off and binding off again like five times because I ended up where Max the Knitter said to be. It was the best bind off for that sock. 
So it really would have saved me from those mistakes and those poor choices and just let me enjoy the process. I don't need to rewrite the pattern when the pattern is written. There's a time for experimentation, but when I'm just kind of knitting my way through a stressful period in my life, because this is a stressful period for everybody, it's best for me to do the thing that's least stressful and kind of take the path of least resistance because this is a hobby. This is not, you know, me trying to perfect my process. Perfection isn't required. The second thing I need to do is trust what I know to be true about the sizes that are best for me. I made assumptions based on a previous sock that didn't match up with what I was gonna do with this sock and it was just the wrong combination. I shouldn't knit a 68 stitch sock with a US size one needle. And like, I know that, but I did it anyway. If I would have just done what has worked for me in the past, as far as sizing is concerned, it would have been okay. I think part of why I went with the 68 stitch sock when I was using the size one needle is because the size one needle does take a little bit longer because the stitches are smaller. And so I was trying to combat that by doing fewer stitches. And I let my desire to have a product influence how I made that product and it was to the detriment of it. I'm such a product knitter that I make decisions that get in the way of having a really good product. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be good because I'm a person that's not gonna be satisfied if it's not good. So I need to trust what I know to be true about sizing and maybe take a little bit more time and not let my desire to get to the finish line influence decisions that I make because it doesn't lead to the right result. Related to that, I think I need to start taking detailed notes on my projects because if I took notes about the bind offs that I've done on previous socks or the needle size and how it fit and how it related to other sizes, even if they were quick notes, I could reference those things instead of trying to keep everything in my head where I let outside forces like stress or whatever influence my decisions. So I think that I need to find that way to take notes because I do put some projects in Ravelry, but it hasn't been a way that I enjoy tracking. I just feel like there's a lot of friction in that process because you have to go through all these steps when really what I need is something I can just write down. Now, I'm not a pen and paper kind of person. I'm actually trying to use less paper in my life. So I think this needs to be digital and I'm considering using my iPad with my Apple Pencil, but I need to find the minimum amount of information that will get me where I need to be. And so I have to work through that process in my head, but I know that note-taking needs to become part of my process. And I just mentioned removing friction that exists in my note-taking, which will help me keep up with that process. And I think the last thing that I need to do is, sorry, Molly's running over here, I think the last thing that I need to do is to remove as much other friction in this process as possible. I often knit socks as a background project or as TV knitting or to go knitting or just like mindless, still interesting, but mindless knitting that kind of will relax me. It's kind of that, that mindful project for me when sometimes other projects are not. And I think I need to trust the designer I need to take notes, but I also need to be prepared to go without having to think. Or when there's a mistake, I have my tools with me instead of having to like get up if I'm watching TV or if I'm running to the park to knit, I don't need to go through all my different bags. I mean, y'all saw my, my knitting bag if you watched my previous video and dig out what I need. So I decided to make a sock go bag that has everything I need for knitting socks and I can just grab it and go. So inside here, I just put a few things. I have uh, my little ruler so I can measure heel, toes, see how much I have left, etc. I have a little bit of scrap yarn because I do do peasant heels a lot. And so I figured I should just have scrap yarn at the ready. I put some little tiny scissors with a little silicone um, cover. So I have those when I need them. I put my darning needles my crochet hook that matches the size of my needles. And I just took a safety pin and put some stitch markers and a little progress keeper because y'all have heard on this channel a million times that a progress keeper at the start of your session of knitting helps you see that you are knitting 
a lot. And all this just stays in this bag. It's everything I need to make socks. And I think this is going to remove that little bit of friction and that little bit of frustration when I have to go searching for what I need. And it just makes it easy for me to grab my sock and go. It gets rid of some excuses and it gets rid of some of the headache. So those are the issues I've been facing, just like putting my stress into every stitch and making mistakes because of it. Um, if you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know I'm knitting a cozy classic raglan and I made some sizing mistakes and there are mistakes I wouldn't have made if I had my head where my head needed to be. If I was seeing this knitting, not as a means to an end, but as a process to help me kind of center myself and to kind of just find peace during this like unpeaceful time. So that's really all I had to discuss today. Thank you so much for sitting here and listening and talking with me. If you got some value out of this video, if you saw yourself in some of this, please definitely hit that like button below. It helps my channel to grow and it helps me know the content that you like and what content I should be making going forward. And if you wanna see that future content, hit the subscribe button as well and the little bell next to it to be notified. So until the next video, enjoy your knitting and I'll see y'all later.